talking muffins, but I could go for some cheesecake. If you're into baking, all-purpose is not always the right pick. Here's what to do with different types of flour. I actually didn't know there were so many types of flour. There are a million types. Tapioca flour, whole grain quinoa flour, tiger nut flour. Well, where the heck do you get a tiger nut from? AP flour is a go-to for so many baked goods, but it might be time to try some of the alternatives. The main difference between the different flour varieties is the percent of proteins, which will give you more or less gluten development. All purpose, of course, is that great go-to for most of your baked goods that'll make fantastic cookies and brownies. This gluten-free flour is good stuff. This stuff is just a one-to-one -one substitute. Here's another one-to-one -one all purpose substitute. I really like that as an option. No thinking, no calculating, no special recipes, just swap it out. I love to make yeast risen recipes like pizza dough or pretzels. And for that, I turn to a bread dough, which is higher in protein and will give you more texture, more structure and a chewier dough. If you've never used bread flour before, try it out. You might be surprised how different the final product turns out. Cake flour is another great alternative, especially for, of course, cakes and cupcakes. Cake flour has less protein than all-purpose and will give you a lighter texture, more fluffier, tender baked goods. Cakes aside, this is a great go-to for biscuits, muffins, and scones. All right, I do need baking powder, arrowroot. I'm gonna grab some of this. All right, not seeing traditional cake flour here. Might have to make our own. One nifty thing is if all you have is all-purpose, you can actually transform that into cake flour. I start by measuring a full cup of all-purpose flour. This is the proper technique. You don't want that flour compacted in your measuring cup. Now remove two tablespoons. Now add in two tablespoons of cornstarch. That'll help inhibit that gluten development in the all-purpose flour, making it behave more like cake flour. Sift these two ingredients together two or three times. This also adds air to the flour, making it less dense powdered sugar on pancakes, but it's not powdered sugar. Measure out what you need per your recipe, and there you go, more tender baked goods. Better yet, use a food scale. A specialty shop is awesome. I'm doing a lot of baking this week, so I'm at a cake decorating store to check out what they have. Now this is already a little overwhelming. They have so many varieties of muffin tins. Oh my goodness, I could throw a party. I feel like many people are apprehensive to bake because of the ingredients needed and the science involved. But if you're starting with a good trusted recipe, that author has already taken care of all the hard work for you. And I have a few tricks that make baking even easier. Once you've found a recipe you wanna make, read it even a couple times so you're familiar with it before you start reaching for ingredients. And to eliminate those web page distractions, I just pull up the printable version. Baking's always easier if you're organized, so pull out all your ingredients and your utensils first to make sure you have everything you need. Ooh, squeeze bottles. I need a couple of these. So easy for frosting. They have so much stuff. Whisk of all sizes, spatulas of all sizes. You call this a knife? Well, this is a knife. I don't have a drawer that could fit this knife. One of the best culinary investments you can make is to get a good food scale. This is gonna save you a ton of effort and can save you on dishes like measuring cups. When I'm looking for recipes, I actually prefer the ones that have the scaled measurements on them. It's a good indicator of the recipe's quality and that it can be made consistently over and over again. Make sure you're always in the right unit of measurement. I need grams for my dry goods. Once you have the mixing bowl on, be sure to tear. That'll zero out the scale. Depending on your scale, there might be a slight delay, so measure things slowly to get the proper measurement. Even though we need to scoop, no leveling required. Weight is the most accurate measurement for any recipe. Measuring cups can be compacted and more dense, so you actually have more of the ingredient than you intended. The great thing about the scale is the next ingredient can go right in. Just hit tear and measure away. Another clever way to use a food scale is to reverse tear. Whatever ingredient you need, put it on the scale first, then hit tear. For my recipe, I need 43 grams, so I'm gonna remove that from the canister. The scale will give you a negative value, and what you removed is the amount you need. Food scales can even replace liquid measuring cups using fluid ounces and milliliters. It's so nice that the ingredients can go right from the container into the bowl. Some ingredients, like peanut butter, if they're sticky and gooey, are hard to measure, but not with a food scale. Everything's perfectly measured with just one bowl. A food scale is also great for portioning. You can separate dough and make sure each piece is the same weight. If a recipe doesn't include weighted measurements, you can easily look up conversion tables or use a voice assistant. It's way easier. Alexa, how many grams in two cups of flour? Two cups of flour weighs about 250 grams. Mini bunt. 
which is kind of like a cupcake, just in a different form. Castle bunt. I mean, it could really go on for days, like the different shapes and textures they have for many things. Look at this one. Different shape bunts. Those are fun. Public service announcement. Start buying oddly shaped baking vessels and surprising your friends and family. If you ask me, one of the most underrated kitchen items is a muffin tin. A muffin tin? A muffin tin? While you may not be into making cupcakes all the time, you can use this way more often than you think. Here are the many ways you can muffin tin. A muffin tin? You can find these in so many shapes and sizes, from mini to mega to standard muffins. Square one, little square mini cakes. So many different types. I like a bigger muffin tin. Is it a cupcake if it's one big cupcake? I think it's just a cake at this point, not a cupcake. I like this mini size to make bite-sized treats and especially mini quiches, so good. A bakery style large muffin tin, I love for savory items like a baked mac and cheese or individual stuffing around the holidays. Oh yeah, I also like to use these for cinnamon rolls, crispy edges all around. I also like the quality. They have a lot of more industrial stuff at a specialty bake shop, and the stuff will be more durable, last a little bit longer. I love making cookies in a muffin tin, actually. A little muffin cup makes it really fun. If you're working with any kind of batter, an ice cream scoop is ideal for filling up that muffin tin. I guess this is called a disher instead of an ice cream scoop, because it's made for way more than just ice cream. It makes it simple, easy, clean, not messy. It's way easier in the kitchen if you can prepare all your ingredients before you start cooking. Instead of a bunch of tiny bowls scattered around, all your ingredients can be in one place. These also can work great for condiments and garnishes, like for a taco night. Never seen something like this before. Disposable muffin tin. Oh, I love these cupcake cups. I wanna get reusable ones. I wonder if they have those. Silicone, reusable. Got so many different themes too. Lumberjack vibes right here. I was gonna wear plaid, red and black today, but I just went with the black and white. I would have matched these. I'm seeing a lot of decorative cupcake liners, but none that are silicone and reusable. So online we go, we will check online. Silicone baking cups are a sustainable alternative to those disposable liners. They're compact, and many of them can actually be used without a muffin tin itself. Just set them on a baking sheet, and you've got a muffin pan right here. Making egg bites, this is one of my favorite ways to meal prep. Okay, hunting down the Wilton baking section. Not seeing baking. I think it's over here. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Little cupcake box here. That's cute. We could have just come here if we wanted to make this many, many cupcakes. 48 mini cupcakes. I'm inviting all of you over to eat up 48 cupcakes. Oh, this is what I wanted. A little cupcake holder. Cakes, cupcakes, deviled eggs. It looks like a cupcake and it's made to hold cupcakes. I've never seen this. Oh, God. You break it, you buy it. It's not broken. Tiered carrier for cookies. I've never seen something like this before. This is kind of neat. Carrier cupcakes, your cookies, brownies even. Kind of neat. Oh, that is all right. Dry good containers. Nothing to see here, nothing to see here, moving on. If you're struggling for success with your baked recipes, it might not be the recipe itself, it might be your oven. Here's how to troubleshoot your oven for better baking. You might notice for so many recipes that 350 is the golden temperature. 350 is that ideal moderate temperature where all the chemistry can happen without cooking too slow or cooking too fast and burning. And that's what leads to tasty baked goods. And yes, preheating is necessary. Baked goods cook better when they go from a cooler environment directly into that hot environment. Now, some recipes need to start at a high temperature, like these muffins. They start at 425 and then lower the oven to 350 to continue baking through. One common issue with ovens is calibration, and that's where an oven thermometer is so handy. Often you set an oven to a temperature, but that's not actually reflected. So an oven thermometer helps you precisely dial in the correct temperature. You'll also wanna pay attention to your oven temperature zones or hot spots. It's ideal to keep things mostly in the center. Too high, the tops may burn. Too low, the bottoms might burn. I've had to bake so many recipes in so many different ovens. Now for the hot part of this dish. Hot oven, watch yourselves. 
and let me tell you, each one of them has their own personality. If you're having issues with a baking recipe, just remember that recipe was developed somewhere where you might not live. So elevation and humidity play a big role in how things bake. So maybe now's the time to get that oven in check and make it work for you.